morning. Okay. Afternoon, <laughs> actually. Okay. Morning or afternoon. All right. <laughs> it is afternoon. It is afternoon. <laughs> All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor and I just wanted to share some information along with our team in advance of severe weather that's expected here in the state over the next couple of days. I'm joined here today by Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our MEMA Director Don Brantley, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs Rebecca Tepper, and Acting Secretary of Transportation Monica tibbets -Nutt. As you know, Hurricane Lee is moving northward up the Atlantic. We are not projected to receive a direct hit we are expected to experience rain, and in some instances, heavy rain and wind um, here in Massachusetts. A tropical storm warning is in effect along the entire Massachusetts coast with the most severe winds expected between midnight tonight and noon tomorrow. The most and, and, and first severe impacts are likely to affect Cape Cod and the islands tonight. Coastal warning, uh, Coastal warnings are in effect for Nantucket and Barnstable counties. And the remainder of our coastline is under a coastal flood advisory, including Essex, Suffolk, Norfolk, and Plymouth counties, as well as Martha's Vineyard. Um, as we've seen in recent weeks, severe weather is not to be taken lightly. Flooding, wind damage, down trees, tree limbs, all of these things create real hazards and problems for people. Uh, we've also seen power outages. So we are mobilizing and have mobilized. Um, I declared a state of emergency in Massachusetts. I do this because it's necessary to get assets in place before anything lands here in Massachusetts. It puts us in the best possible position to be able to respond in the ways that we need. Um, this includes both uh, positioning equipment and personnel. We also have sent to the federal government the formal request for an emergency declaration under the Stafford Act. Again, this enables us to work with FEMA to provide direct federal assistance for any needs that go beyond the capacity of the state's resources. Um, already, our teams have been in coordination with the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center. Uh, MEMA has done its job and initiated all of the pre-planning pre work uh, with its partners for response. As of tomorrow, 7 a.m., the State Emergency Operations Center in Framingham will be activated along with MEMA's East Regional Emergency Operations Centers in Franklin and Tewksbury. In addition, we're activating up to 50 National Guards people uh, to be able to assist if needed, uh, in particular by using specialized high water vehicles that can navigate our flood waters. Uh, at least 10 towns requested those high water vehicles, and that's why we needed to activate the National Guard, because they are the ones that have the high water vehicles and also operate those high water vehicles. Again, our hope is that they are not needed, but the important news is that they will be in place. In addition, the Red Cross is already pre-staged in locations around the state, and importantly, around uh, our utilities. As you know, we expect high winds, and so therefore we have to deal with this the possibility of uh, debris and trees and down lines. The first thing is make sure, don't go near down lines. Down lines are so dangerous. Please uh, do not walk near, drive near, stay away from down lines. Second, know that the utilities have already pre-staged. There are uh, personnel and equipment right now that have been brought to Nantucket, the vineyard, and throughout the Cape. Um, again, their job is to make sure they are prepared to respond to any power outage as soon as it is safe. As of this evening, following this evening's commute, we are going to uh, temporarily suspend ferry service, both MBTA ferry service as well as operations of the Steamship Authority. This is important. We're going to close it down after this evening's commute, and uh, those, will, those will remain closed through uh, tomorrow. Um, if you're flying or planning on flying, uh, just check, uh, check with your airline or massport.com. Um, I remind folks, please do not go near the water or the water's edge. Um, be ready for possible power outages and stock up and, and take precautions. Do not go near or touch downed power lines. Um, if you uh, are, want to, follow us uh, on, on MEMA. Uh, visit, uh, visit our mass.gov slash hurricane prep for up-to-date facts and guidance. And importantly, if you're impacted by flooding, and I am sorry that so many people have experienced devastating flooding around this state in recent weeks and months, look, uh, please know that you can find help and resources at mass.gov slash 
flood recovery. Um, thank you now in advance to all of our local and state partners, our public safety officials, our first responders, um, who have all been mobilizing, working to keep people safe here around the state. I'll now turn it over to MEMA Director Don Brantley for additional updates. Good morning, thank you, Governor Healy. So MEMA has been planning and preparing for the arrival of Hurricane Lee since Sunday and is prepared to respond to impacts experienced by the Commonwealth. Daily coordination calls began last Sunday and continue daily with the National Hurricane Center, the National Weather Service, FEMA Region 1, other states in the region, state agencies, and cities and towns. When a storm like Hurricane Lee is headed toward the Commonwealth, we start preparing and planning well ahead of landfall. Our emergency plans outline a series of actions that must be taken and decisions that must, must be made as far out as 120 hours before the arrival of tropical storm force winds. So through comprehensive planning, the Commonwealth has a set of timelined action checklists with more than 180 actions and 36 critical decisions that must be made in the days leading up to a hurricane event, even when we are not 100% certain of the track um, and forecasted impacts are still changing. These decisions are made and actions taken in close coordination with the governor's administration, FEMA, the Weather Service, and other partners. And while we don't always need to take all of the actions, when people's safety could be at risk, we always hope for the best outcome, but we prepare for the worst case. In fact, we always prepare for a category above what is forecast, because this puts us in a position to have the resources and capabilities ready to go if they are needed. Trying to get them in place after impact is often too late. So while the forecast is now for moderate impacts from Hurricane Lee, this storm follows a series of significant rain events where we have seen that even smaller amounts can impact infrastructure and people's lives. Having an emergency declaration in place uh, pre-event allows the Commonwealth to mobilize resources and personnel to prepare to request direct federal assistance through FEMA and allows uh, MEMA the ability to take the necessary actions to respond. So the State Emergency Operations Center and MEMA's regional EOCs will be activated Saturday and are prepared for 24-7 operations for as long as they are needed. The SEOC will, the State EOC will be staffed by multiple agencies to coordinate the state's response and to support local level response. FEMA will be providing a liaison officer to the State EOC in Framingham. MEMA is continuing pre-impact planning with local, state, and federal partners around search and rescue, mass care, debris management, communications, damage assessment, and the potential for power outage. We've coordinated with DFS, the Statewide Tech Rescue Council, Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts and the Fire Mob Task Force, as well as the National Guard and state police around search and rescue. Uh, we have uh, heard from Red Cross, who has pre-staged teams of staff and volunteers across the Commonwealth and to the Cape and Islands to support up to more than 8,000 people with sheltering and feeding support, should it be needed. MEMA has worked with commercial, commercial communications carriers to ensure preparedness activities are underway. AT&T FirstNet is deploying assets towards the Cape to be prepared for impacts there. MEMA has also coordinated with MassDOT around regional transit authorities, should, be the, should they be needed to support evacuation. The Department of Environmental Protection is coordinating with the Office of Public Safety and Inspections should there be a need for surveys and assessments post-event. And they are also working with agencies in the event that debris management groups are needed to coordinate debris missions. MEMA has already been in contact with our debris management vendors should those contracts be needed for debris removal after the impact. So MEMA has been and continues to work with Eversource surrounding the staging of fuel tankers to refuel response vehicles, um, and has provided those utilities that requested it uh, with a border crossing letter to expedite support from our Canadian partners. We recommend that all residents and visitors in the state stay informed and take precautions ahead of anticipated impacts to Massachusetts. Know your zone, learn if you live in an evacuation zone, and if you do live in an area that's prone to flooding, you should be prepared to evacuate if necessary, particularly if you have a concern about access to health care personal care services, or other medical or disability related needs that could be impacted by flooding. Consider self-evacuating ahead of the storm just to ensure your health and safety. Have your emergency kit ready and easily 
accessible should you need any supplies like food, water, flashlight, radio. And if you have consumable medical supplies or durable equipment battery needs, please include those in your emergency kit. Prepare for possible power outages by ensuring all of your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are functional and have fresh batteries and consider purchasing a generator uh, to provide power during an outage. And if you have life support devices or other medical equipment or supplies which depend on electricity, notify your utility and work with your medical provider to, to prepare for power outages. Again, we hope that the impacts are minor this weekend, but if they are not, the Commonwealth is prepared. Thank you. Thanks, Director. Um, any questions on topic? Yep. Again, we continue to be in coordination with uh, cities and towns around the state and all of their emergency preparedness um, operations. Our focus right now is on the coast. I think that's where we're going to see the real rain and particularly the winds. And that's why we made sure that both state uh, assets as well as the assets of utilities were shifted to Nantucket, to Martha's Vineyard and along the Cape. So that really is where we think we're going to see the, the real impact and that is of greatest concern. So uh, we'll watch that, that carefully. But, you know, I would say, as you just heard from Director, we feel we're prepared across the Commonwealth. We certainly hope, uh, hope for the best, but we always have to prepare for the worst. Well, first of all, those residents have already been hard hit. Um, we were just out in Central Mass. I'm really pleased about the coordination and the partnership, state and local in particular. Over the last week, uh, MEMA was on the ground Monday and has been there uh, ever since. DOT has been out helping to rebuild. Um, EEA has had its teams on the ground, and we continue to stay in touch with, with local officials there who are doing the very, very hard work of rebuilding, and especially the residents. So it is my hope. Uh, while we can't control the weather, it is certainly our desperate hope that Central Mass, Western Mass, uh, escape the brunt of, of this storm. We want to have a successful Big E this weekend. Um, it's terrific for, for Massachusetts. I would say just use common sense. You know, if you see rain, if you see wind, just be careful. Do you really need to go out on the road? Or if you have to go out on the road, just be careful, be smart. Um, but we'll have assets in place so that we're covered statewide. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I think anybody with, uh, with, with eyes um, who's, who's just making general observations, not just here in Massachusetts, but around this country, around the globe, understands this is, of course, related to climate change and all that's happened with our, with our, with our planet. Um, it's why we have really made a decision to lead uh, the country. It's why we have a climate chief sitting atop to think about what is the mo most proactive agenda that we can advance here in Massachusetts in terms of the investments and the strategic decisions we need to make around infrastructure, around resilience, around sustainability, while we work hard to uh, to move from a fossil fuels based economy to an economy based on, on renewables. So that is incredibly important work. It continues. And in the meanwhile, um, as your government, we need to be prepared to deal with the acute and the day to day. And that's what today is all about. We hope that everybody is safe out there. Again, uh, particularly uh, hope that, that things go as well as they can on the Cape and Islands and along our coast. We will be watching um, and uh, we'll be ready to provide further updates as, as necessary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Both. Both, okay. Um, as you know, Governor Mills has also declared a state of emergency in Maine. They expect to see some of this hit landfall in a way that it won't directly hit us here. But I think, you know, we will see surges and we will see impact on the coast. Uh, we hope it's uh, to the minimum, but we do have to be prepared. And that's why there is a, a coastal flooding warning um, and advisory for the entire Massachusetts coastline. Thank you. We always stand at the ready to help all of our sister states. Thank you. Okay. Our job isn't done until we get the tax package over the finish line. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.